Hi guys, I guess you're going to start with uh, the number that we have. Um, some guys normally register and they forget about it. Uh, maybe it's, uh, it's something I've noticed uh, for some time now, but that will prevent us from moving on. Before we start, I think we'll just give ourselves an intro. This class had the uh, the least registered guys. Uh, we had, I think, uh, six. Six guys had registered. Um, the registration was quite a long time ago. So most probably guys had even forgotten that these classes would go, would go through. So I can see Fred, Mark, and Lorna. Lorna, I think you learned about it today. Sorry? <laughs> no, I'm saying, I think you learned about the class today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good to see you. Um, uh, but what I'll do before before I just go through this the slides, uh, um, Freddy, you could just introduce yourself, uh, what you do, um, what you expect out of uh, basically your your experience in machine learning, basic, intermediary, or advanced. And then we'll go to Mark, and then we'll go to Lorna, and then we can start. Freddy? Hi, guys. My name uh, is Fred Munya. Mm. So I'm a beginner. I have basic knowledge. Mm -hmm. I've been doing Arduino programming and traceability. Okay. Yeah, so I'm open to, to learn with you. All right. Yeah. Today's class is going to be a bit intense, but uh, don't worry. What's your interest with image processing? Out of the out of the five uh, uh, sessions that uh, were in the form, what made you interested in image processing or image classification? Yeah, Freddy, are we are we still together? Seems like we lost already. Okay, Mark. Hi. Hi, hi, Mark. Uh, so, uh, my name is Mark. Uh, in terms of uh, my my situation with machine learning, it's kind of complicated. I wouldn't call myself a beginner. I have done some machine learning as well. Uh, I did the Coursera course with Andrew NG in MATLAB. Also, I know my way around some pandas, some visualizations. So I'm not a beginner, but I wouldn't say I'm that advanced. I mean, I can understand code if I see it, but uh, yeah, that's about, I can't write code for myself. Uh, okay. Yeah, so it's a, I can understand what people are saying, but I can't come up with the solutions myself. <laughs> How is that? You don't, you don't code? No, I do, but I actually, I have a project which okay. is not related to computer vision. It's a machine learning and it's a detecting anomalies. Okay. Uh, so I am trying to get myself to, you know, La to know how to solve machine learning problems. Oh, okay, that's good. Uh, if I may ask, what was the what is your particular interest in uh, image or computer vision, image classification, image processing? Yeah. So uh, for image processing, uh, I think I think of all the machine learning uh, applications, this is the coolest. You know, <laughs> think of Tesla. Uh, yeah. You know. I mean, NLP is great and all, but it's not flashy. You, how you can do some cool stuff with computer vision. So I guess that you, that is one of the reasons I, I chose image classification image over classification. NLP. Uh, ah, yeah. okay. All right. Okay. Uh, good, good stuff. Karibu um, sana, Mark. What, what, so what are your expectations? Because, you know, this is, this is, um, 
it's an extended considering we're doing it only once every week and uh, it's going to be intense because even after the classes uh, the way we've done the previous two classes is uh, during the week there is some work that you need to do in preparation for the next class so that is going to be a bit intense um, especially for those guys who are either beginners or uh, or uh, guys who are not maybe employed uh, eight to five so you might not get time to do one or two things so what are your expectations it's stretched through to september uh, so hopefully i will be able to uh complete an entire machine learning uh problem from start to finish so that is uh, my expectation so at the end of this hopefully i can like say for example i'm given a problem uh save its classification of uh, some sort of disease or something that requires images or if it is an object classification system, I should be able to know all the steps from the be from beginning to end. Ah, cool, cool. All right. Well, feel feel welcome, uh, Lona. We are with you. I know you. Um, Lona is my colleague, but I think I'll, I'll, I'll let her just introduce herself and um, say her. <laughs> just answer the three questions. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll just keep it simple. Okay, for <laughs> me, my name is Lona. Um, Ayub is my, is my colleague, and I think we started this journey with him. And um, we, we have a lot of learnings, and we kind of exchange our learnings together. So for me, I'll, I'll tell you why I tuned in. Um, mm. In my line of work, I'm, let me say this, you don't deal with, you, you deal with the problem uh, based on, when a problem comes, you kind of deal with it based on uh, the problem. The problem That means you might never get to interact with other, uh, what can I say, with other models, because basically it is the problem you face and and you kind of solve it from that perspective. For me, the reason why I tuned in is just curiosity. Okay. So I want to learn. Okay. And I'm curious about it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. I hope yeah. I'm satisfy your curiosity. Um, yeah. But um, there are, uh, there are uh, five classes. Uh, two have already begun. Um, this is actually the one that had the least registration. Um, guys who okay. expressed to, to learn. Um, the, the very, very first one was NLP, which has kicked off. Um, there is a second one was for demand forecasting, and today was now image classification. And the approach and model you're using is a project based. So, as a class, you're going to take a specific uh, problem statement based on a specific domain from scratch to from ground up. So it suits even for beginners. Uh, so Freddie, don't be, don't be worried, um, even for beginners, because there are some projects that you get to see um, uh, solving a problem and, and, and using several, several ways. Like for instance, uh, this is the only one that is a bit straightforward um, and it's entirely on uh, deep learning. The others, you, one project, you can use it to learn recreation techniques. You can use the same, same project to learn uh, classification and use the same, same technique to learn how to build a neural net. Uh, so that is how we've designed it. So it's pretty much interesting. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's very engaging. And uh, yeah, I hope you stick around to the end for the project uh, now that it started all the way to the end. Ending on in September. Okay, I'll just I'll 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 uh, I'll take you guys through the the roadmap, and before I do that, Josephat, you joined us. So what we are doing is uh, we're just introducing ourselves, um, uh, our level of uh, understanding machine learning, our expectations. Yeah, over to you. Hello guys, uh, I'm Josephat, uh, I'm a web developer and I'm a beginner, I'm here to learn, I'm here to learn, thank you. Okay, 
good stuff just for uh, karibu sana so for image classification the theme that i had put is um, looking at uh, a specific set of images and uh, based on the problem uh, what i would propose is this class has very very few guys and today we you guys are only four so i think it's going to be a bit easier than the previous classes though we were also able to come up the, the the way we do it is we explore the various possible problems that we can solve using uh, what you're going to learn and then we pick one out of uh, what has been proposed and then that now forms the basis of what you're going to learn all the way to the end and each one of us is supposed to propose um, based on the understanding of the problem that can be solved and the the, the end game is to solve um, a problem that actually is needed outside there so you're not just building a model but uh, we are deploying we will build a model deploy a model and uh, deploy it in a manner that it can be consumed outside there and most uh, most people outside there they have access to websites and they have access to uh, uh, android apps or mac os apps um, so the 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 model that we will build we will be tasked to we will have to deploy it in one of those platforms where either through rest and have it used so that is the end game of each of these projects so any every participant will have to based on the understanding of the problem statement they have to make a proposal of what problem can be solved including myself i will make a proposal and then uh, together we will all pick one all right so the plan is um uh, this this class like i said it's a bit uh, unique it had the the few the very few people and it's um, deep learning and it's a very straightforward uh, it's a very straightforward uh, uh, session. It's not as complex or as engaging or as involving as the others. So the first thing like today, uh, it's just um, going through the problem statement and then we, are, we will discuss um, and agree on a problem. Immediately after that, I will walk you through um, a slides on understanding deep learning. I think this would be, I'm not so sure about Maxilla. Maxilla, have you, experience uh, do you have experience with any deep learning do you understand deep learning i just want to know from where i'm going to start and now i'm going to balance the class uh, so i i know about uh, neural networks and uh, i've done some tensor flow so yeah, yeah I, I i understand uh some of the concepts of deep learning so i know uh uh rnn cnn stuff like that so awesome i mean all right yeah. okay all right um uh, freddy you you mentioned i think we lost you must have lost freddy for, for whatever reason uh just what yeah uh i'm totally blank totally blank uh, but the, 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 there's a time we learned about about it in in ai studies but you reset uh, i'm just in a beginner i think i will okay. I'll catch up. okay yeah yeah no worry um uh, uh lona i know you guys do some really cool stuff <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. But I believe there is there is always something new to learn. I, uh -huh. I I I believe it's always a continuous learning process. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so for Lona and Mark, uh, just in case I am I am saying something that sounds so obvious, uh, you'll bear with me. All these classes, the way I carry them uh, out is I don't assume anyone to um, to to know. So I I I I try and make explanations from the very very base. And uh, for those guys who have uh, a bit more experience, they are also allowed to to explain. Yeah, they are also allowed to explain and contribute. That is how we run our classes. So um, if I miss out a concept, you can interject and just make a contribution. So everyone in the class uh, 
uh, learns and we move forward together because this is a project that we are going to deliver as a team uh, for as long as you are uh, attending each of those classes. So participation is, is going to be very, very key. All right. Okay. Um, having said that, we are going to, the first thing today is just intro to the planning. Um, I'll go through some slides. Uh, there are a couple of slides, by the way. And then the next, uh, the next uh, session, based on the problem that we pick, we'll have to get the data. We'll have to get the data. In this case, our data is just images. And then we will have to put them together, prepare and level them. And we'll explore our directory structure, um, the way we are going to organize for train and validation. We will write a couple of functions, uh, and that will take us like around three days. Um, the reason why I'm putting this is because for each of the function, I'd plan to give uh, a comprehensive explanation of the functions and um, slide in a couple of uh, theory on uh, on those functions as we as we write them in Python, and then uh, after those three days, uh, we will do a neural net, and it's going to be a convolutional one. And um, the last, uh, just before um, pickling the model, like now uh, the last day, that would be 11th of September, we'll visualize both the training and validation test. Uh, we'll be looking at the metrics, basically the metrics of our model, okay? And eventually, <clears throat> um, I'm not so sure if everyone is aware, but I think some, some people in this class are, are aware, uh, just for it, uh, now, Mark, I'm not so sure if you're aware. So the end game, like I said, is deploying um, a model end to end. And um, once we do that, there will be a demo day, a demo day um, in a meetup. We have a meetup, Africa Tech Startups Ecosystem Nairobi. So it will be online. And one of the people or two or even everyone who participated in each of the projects we'll have a chance to like now just showcase it. I'll just take a, a back seat and um, those guys will showcase the, the solution, the journey and how it has been and probably um, answer questions from the audience. So the meetup is a big one. It's uh, like around 740 people. Um, and it's, um, we plan to meet once every three months. So in September, it will be uh, the first meetup, okay? So that is the roadmap. And my hope and prayer is uh, at the end of this, there is actually a, a deployable and usable um, model, uh, model outside there, um, impacting one or two people on, a, on their daily lives. All right. So uh, just give me a minute. Let me open up the other slide. Uh, before I open the other slide, uh, uh, I will go first with regards to uh, what I have in mind. And then um, uh, Mark Silla, and then Freddie, and then Josphat, and finally Lorna. Okay. So, ideally, like I said, all the projects you're doing, um, we need to take them to production, and it needs to, it needs to work out there. Um, so I thought of uh, a skin detection um, model that would help mothers. For example, uh, Lona, Lona is the only lady in this group. In this group, uh, what I'm not so sure if uh, if she's a mom yet, uh, but one day she will. Be. <laughs> not yet, but one day. Yes, yes. thanks. One one day you will be. Uh, I know to, to young mothers, it's a nightmare, especially to young first mothers. Um, the slightest thing on your, on your child's skin, it's, it's scary. You, you wonder what it is and you just don't know. It's just, it's just a, an experience that you have no idea. You keep running to the hospital. So can we build a model? Um, and there, there are ladies who are born with eczema and uh, I'm told that eczema, it's, it's something that if it is responded to faster when you're at your early, um, your early years as a child, then it won't come to affect your, adults, uh, your adulthood. 
So some of these things can, can be very, very helpful. So if it's just heat trash, um, and then the young mother would just probably take a photo, upload it on an app, and then um, get a description of most likely what it, this is about. And if it is a heat trash, uh, it can be recommended as a heat trash, but with a disclaimer, of course, we are not, uh, we are not medics. Yeah, so it's just for fun, but it can be used. Yeah. So that is what I had in mind. And uh, like I said, we build um, one that can detect uh, skin diseases for, for, for kids. Um, there are quite a lot of skin diseases and be able to predict um, with some accuracy what, what skin disease that could be, yeah? So that is what I would propose that uh, we, we, we do, but uh, it would be good to hear from the rest of the guys. And then we will finally pick on one. Once we pick on one, there will be an action plan for the, before the next class, and we will all have to participate. Uh, like previous classes, uh, immediately after this, uh, we join a separate class where we execute each of the tasks and uh, we engage and deliver the final solution. Okay. So, Mark. Hello, Mark. Hello. Uh, yeah. I'm so I'm supposed to propose my idea. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, I think I have, let's say, two ideas. One, mm -hmm. not so feasible, and the other, I think, more feasible, I guess. Okay. So the first, I would say, something to do with the uh, drones. You know how these self-driving cars have their own, they can navigate through, they mm -hmm. can recognize objects and navigate through like mm -hmm. streets and whatnot. Yeah. So I was thinking uh, something along those lines for drones since, okay. you know, uh, people like Jumia, Amazon can probably use them to deliver like goods. Mm -hmm. So that one is the not so feasible one because, you know, you need a drone and uh, sort of those sensors and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And uh, the second will be something to do with maybe health tech, like what you said with the skin detection. So probably something that will take uh, things that are very expensive to diagnose. For example, uh, if it's uh, cancer, whether it's lung cancer or uh, chest uh, pneumonia, stuff that is usually takes a lot of time to, to diagnose and requires expensive equipment so, and make it like, easier so that it can be used by more people. Okay. I don't know if you... Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. I, I get, I get, I get the idea. Um, especially, uh, you're you're talking, you're thinking about uh, expense in terms of diagnosing di diagnosis. Yeah, so you know, some equipment is usually like expensive to for a hospital to have. Yeah, and uh, the diagnosis itself takes a lot of time and like doctors. So yeah. if we could make it such that you only need one machine that can serve more people and make it cheaper for the individual person to use the service. I guess that will be, that will be, uh, it will help to give healthcare to more people. All right, all right. And uh, I, I like, I like your, the one you had mentioned as well for uh, drones. Um, what what exactly do you have in mind? Because uh, this one is for uh, computer vision. Do you think uh, for uh, when you say delivery, you're looking at uh, a model for uh, similar to you had mentioned self-driving cars? Yeah, like you know how we have the Tesla, mm -hmm. so we can have a Tesla drone. Yeah, mm -hmm. so instead of having people come and deliver the packages to you, mm. you can just use drones, which I think will be more efficient since you can have a drone multi uh, delivering multiple packages at the mm. same time. 
and okay. it can find the shortest way possible and stuff like that. Okay. Also, they don't need to get paid. All right. Which is a bad thing, but to sell to businesses, it's a good thing. All right. Okay. Cool stuff. All right. So let me let me pick from the other guys as well, and then uh, and then uh, we can all pick on one based on uh, the viability. Okay. Uh, Fred, are you back? I think we lost Fred. Uh, it could be either. It All right. So I can see Maina. Maina, you joined. Maina. Maina, what's that? Okay, let's go to Sharon. Hi, Sharon. Hi. Uh, oh, that's that was coming from you or your end or from Maida's end? I'm Sharon. Oh, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm hearing some uh, background noise. Yeah, I have a, yeah. Oh, it's coming from your side, eh? Okay, all right. Yes, yeah, so let me mute my mic. Uh, no problem. Just mute it after you say something. It's not a problem. Um, so, so what, what, what was what, happening? What we're doing is we're just... Um, Introducing ourselves, that, that's the part that we had done earlier. Uh, introducing ourselves, our, our experience with ML, our level of experience with ML, and then your expectation. So if you could combine it with uh, um, a proposal of a project that you feel we can pick for uh, image classification or image processing, basically computer vision. Uh -huh. Okay, for me, I'm just a beginner. Okay. I'm starting with the basics of statistics and probability. All right. And understanding the, the knives, theories, and all those. Okay. okay. So I don't have, have much understanding of the topics. All right. Okay. So um, I'm expecting to learn more from my colleagues and you as the expert. <laughs> okay, we are all learners. All yeah. right, no problem. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Shari Busana, Shari. Okay. Thank you. Um, so for Maina, I don't know if Maina is back. Yes, hello. Hi, Maina. Yeah, hi. Are you? Yeah. So, so what? To, to finally be in the meeting. Karibu and uh, mm. as far as uh, ML is concerned, yes, I am uh, a continuing beginner, uh, but uh, uh, with some uh, basics on ML. But more so, the, the, the reason I wanted to, I chose image processing because there was some assignment mm. that uh, we were given and I, I really fumbled mm. with the not recognition. Mm. Like, recognize if this is a 50 shilling note. Mm. I think it's, uh, it, it, it pertains to image processing. OCI. And uh, yeah, that so that's well, that was the motivation behind selecting image processing, and hopefully now that uh, 
I have some basic on um, maybe random forest and all other statistical methods. Yeah, I hope I may find somewhere to use them. Okay. All right. Yes. All right. Karibu sana. There is someone who's constantly trying to reconnect. I don't know that person who that is, but I think we will just proceed. Now we have we have uh, Maina. Before we proceed, do you have a proposal of a project we can do? Oh, that is what you meant. Um, currency recognition for for recognizing currency. What what did you say the project was? Maina. Oh, let me unmute. Okay. Oh, uh, so what I meant. Yeah. Uh, for the, the reason I, I chose image processing uh, project, it was uh, uh, majorly uh, to to be able to uh, to identify nodes. Yeah. And for that matter, I can currency. Yeah, yeah. I saw some project somewhere and it, it really moved me. All right. All right. Yeah, I want to. So in terms of project ideas, uh, we, we are at the, at the stage where we, we, we need to pick a project and, um, and run through with it from, uh, from ground all the way to the end, to the point where we, we deploy mm -hmm. and uh, a, a solution that can be used outside there. <laughs> And the, the period we are looking at is three months. Um, what what project idea do you do you have in mind uh, that we can actually use in class uh, as we learn about um, computer vision? I had that one. Currency recognition. For currency. Is it viable? Is it viable? Yeah, why not? Um, faith currency, it would be important. Let me say if, uh, if there is uh, any fake uh, currency, the retailers outside there, if you have a con person giving you fake cash, and then if you don't have that green light, I don't know, UV light, if you don't have it, um, you could have an app that you, you, you upload a photo and it tells you, okay, this is uh, most likely a fake currency. Yeah, so it's viable. And you see, um, if you can build a solution that can be used by mass, um, then uh, you, first of all, you'll have learned a lot. And then second of all, uh, it's up to you to now put a price to it. Um, so that is the benefit of, so it is, it is viable. So I'll just take note of that. So we have, uh, unfortunately, Fred has, Fred has gone mute. So Hoping you will do. Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay. But you might want to mute one. I think you have two devices. Fred. Oh, okay, that's better. Fred. I think Fred is facing some challenges. Because um, there's quite a lot of uh, content for uh, the planning, especially for... Uh, Fred, I'll need you to confirm if you can, if you can hear our discussion, because if you can hear our discussion, we can proceed. If you have any points, you could then chat us. Okay. So I'll, I'll just assume that uh, Fred would join us and uh, we can actually pick uh, a project. Uh, Lona, before we pick a project, um, what's your contribution? Uh, hey, so for me, uh, I know we can do, there's so many projects we can do. Like 
uh, we can do surrounding face recognition. What this, uh, what the other gentleman said about fake currency, there is also uh, um, like cancer detection, kidney stones detection. Uh, what else can I? I'm even thinking as complex as blind assistance. But for me, I, I always feel med something that even traffic lights, like the way we have so many issues in regards to traffic. So kind of uh, find, do image processing on so that it can intelligently know uh, where there's a lot of traffic and kind of uh, focus on the traffic lights but for me where i feel it hits home is anything within the medical field mm. so I, I feel that that is a very impactful uh project if you mm. ask me so yeah. like the one you suggested is a good one or anything maybe even if it's cancer or kidney stone or whatever that is mm. facing uh, Kenyans today would be would be a very very uh, important project or would carry a lot of weight. Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, I think uh, that it's almost like we are convening to health. It's uh, we are we are all con converging to to health. Now, with regards to health, I would want us to. Just quickly uh, pick uh, a specific uh, field uh, as uh, based on what has been floated. Um, there is uh, baby skin detection. That is what I had proposed earlier. Um, uh, yourself and L Lona and uh, Maxilla, you also came. Up, you you also mentioned about cancer, cancer detection, and also kidney. So, which which of these should we pick? Um, and when we are picking, I would I would I would suggest uh, we pick uh, a solution that can can be used by majority of people, especially um, free, uh, like now without a lot of concern, because we are not medics and. Uh, uh, as we know, it's, it is said that uh, all models are, long, are, are wrong, but uh, some are useful. So the fact that all models are wrong, um, and we are going into a field that uh, has uh, life implications, we may want to start off with uh, something that is less risky. Someone can actually do it just for fun or use it for fun. And it can access uh, majority of users. And if I look at the three, I'm thinking, I'm thinking um, baby skin detection or skin disease, baby skin disease det detection, or not even baby skin detection. We could start off with the uh, skin skin disease de detection and um, and based on the learnings then we could now um, maybe use it as a proof of concept to engage uh, the possibility because I know other things that could uh, um, prevent prevent us from moving forward at the speed that we want could be things like legislation, um, uh, clearance from the medical board when we are talking about now cancer and stuff like that. Because I remember there was a time I wanted to do a chatbot that um, would assist doctors in uh, diagnosis. This one required uh, clearance from the board, dentist and medical, that board. So there's a lot of legislation. And when you mentioned about drones, that was, that was really, really good. And again, it is impacting we are impacted by legislation as well. Um, and the project that we want to do, we want to do a project that one, it's going to help us learn. And then two, by the time we are finishing it, we should be having users, even if users just for, for testing and, and playing around with it, we need to have users. And based on that, uh, I'm, I'm, 
I'm thinking the skin disease detection is resonates with almost everyone. I concur. Okay. Mark? Yeah, I'm also on board. I have a question. Yes, yes. Will the, will the, med, the images that we are, we are getting for the skin cancer, will, will, they, will they require, uh, for example, an x-ray or something like that? Or could we find a way that is like non-invasive so that the test can be done multiple times without having like health? You know how you can't do an x-ray more than once? Yeah. Because of the radiation. So I was asking if we can find an invasive way of seeing the cancer. Yeah. I think you get what I, I, I'm going for. Yeah, yeah. And I think because of such challenges, if we go, uh, uh, if, we, if we opt to take cancer as a, as a project, we will face a, a lot of challenges with uh, the process we want to go for. And uh, considering between cancer and uh, skin, skin disease detection, um, I'm thinking skin disease, uh, it's, it's like, it's uh, an individual who decides, um, I heard that there is an app that can help me know what's happening. Let me use it, I want to figure out what's wrong with my skin. Uh, it doesn't need any clearance. It's an app that someone just uses for recommendation and for playing around. But when you're talking about cancer, it is very, very sensitive and it's, it's an emotive thing that uh, it's regulated uh, by and large. Uh, I, 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 at this stage and within three months, for us guys to make those strides in terms of uh, identifying um, how we can proceed, I think it, it would be a long shot because uh, personally, I don't, I don't know any, any uh, what are they called, ontologists? Are they the ones dealing with uh, cancer patients? Uh, let me check, let me, let's just. Yeah, so uh, when we're building a machine learning model, especially when we are, we, are, we are coming up with some confidence level in terms of the output, we, we definitely need domain expertise. And amongst us, we don't have that domain expertise because there are some things that we could read, but uh, a doctor being in that domain would actually advise us. So the presence of uh, an ontologist, I think it's an ontologist, I'm not so sure. Uh, the presence of a doctor dealing with cancer in the team will go a long way, even in the acceptance and usage of that model. Mark, there's something you're checking? Yeah, I was checking, yeah, it's an oncologist, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I'm thinking for, for our, our three month uh, period, uh, let's settle in on, on, on skin, and then we at least we get a benchmark, even if uh, now we opt to move to the next level. When you're talking to the oncologist, uh, we, we tell them this is what we've done so far, and we believe this thing can, can grow into this and help people in this way, but we need your help uh, in uh, unlocking some of these doors that have been locked. Um, so it will be it will be easier for someone to listen to us if we have something that is working uh, with some level of success, and we actually have users who most likely would uh, leave uh, recommendations and comments. How does that sound, Mark? Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, yeah, I think that's that would that is a worthwhile project. Oh, okay. That, oh. I, I I think it, it it will be uh, constructive to helping like more people. And maybe after having uh, after doing this, we can expand it to more skin mm. skin diseases, so that it can be for like a a one stop shop for skin diseases. <laughs> okay. All right. So I really wish uh, others would have contributed, but uh, because of sound and also um, I believe they will be with us. I, uh, let me try, Freddie, are you back online or uh, you're still having sound issues? I'm back. Ah, perfect. So what we, we've, settled, we've settled in on, uh, on a skin disease um, problem.
So basically, we are going to build a model that uh, helps uh, mothers and by extension, hopefully, even adults to detect uh, the disease or the rash that they have on their skin. It's like just a, a quick check on uh, what they're suffering from before they just go to the specialist, a dermatologist, yeah? Okay, uh, so having said that, I think now we have a good quorum. Um, I'll just open up the slides. And this is going to be driven by uh, deep learning and uh, CNN by large, uh, mainly. So a, a bit of background on uh, deep learning is crucial. So I'll, I'll try very much to be a layman to, to speak English. Um, more often than not, I, 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 I fail miserably. But I'll, I'll really try to speak English. Alona uh, Mark, uh, if I get stuck, you, you assist me to speak English. Uh, the moment you feel like I'm, I'm, I'm disappearing. Uh, could you guys confirm to me if you can see my screenshot? my screen not yet you can't um, about now yeah, it's visible. Uh, you can see something on deep learning. Yes. Yeah. All right. Now, um, deep learning is basically, uh, it's part of AI and it's part of, it's a subset of machine learning. Um, but the way, the way it does, or the way it understands its data, it's, it's different. The way the algorithm uh, try to extract um, information from the data it has it's different from the other uh, econometric methods like now the other um, classifiers that we are we know you, uh, minor you mentioned random forest uh, others with logistic regression so that is a difference it's the mode within which that information is extracted from uh, from the data um, i'm going to explain uh, but by and large we have uh, if we look at a data set, a data set, for instance, um, a very, very basic uh, problem uh, that you want to predict, uh, let me use a cat or a dog. That one is used very, very common. So the econometric methods you would have, um, okay, let's not go with cat or dog because that is an image. I'll come back to that. Let's go with the sentiment analysis. You have statements and you have a label. Uh, and a statement is what I can say, for instance. I can say, uh, today is Friday and I feel awesome. As uh, someone else would say, I, today is Friday, it's just two days to Monday. Um, I don't look forward to Monday. My, 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 my weekend is going to be very busy. All those three statements, they, have, they can fit into one of three categories, where one would be someone is happy, another, another one is neutral, another one is uh, not happy. Yeah, and what would tell uh, that some um, something is happy? It's the features within that text. It's the the information within that text. Okay, so if you if you were to look at the presence of certain words in those statements as the features that actually determine whether a statement will be classified as positive or negative or neutral positive being happy, sad, or neutral, then that word then, then becomes a feature. So it could be, I feel awesome. The word awesome could be the feature that actually determines uh, whether or not that statement is positive or negative. But with NLP, uh, when you do NLP, there is so much to than, uh, that, that it checks other than uh, a word, yes? There is so much that it checks. This is just an example. So let's speak like for our case and for simplicity, this text, all this text, we go inside the text and we look for those positive words. And when we find it, then this statement is a positive statement. If we find a negative one, we go into 
we find it's a negative, st negative statement. If we miss uh, either a positive or, or a negative word, then we say it is neutral. So the process within which we go inside that text and extract this and find out these words is what differs uh, on, on with, the, with deep learning, the techniques uh, of, of uh, deep learning. It goes, the algorithm goes and tries and, and extract specific characters on an image, for instance, in this case, specific characters of an image and try and learn from it what could it mean, yeah? So uh, for the very, very basic uh, example, you take a photo of yourself, yeah? So the first thing um, most likely that uh, the algorithm will do is to remove all the colors, yeah? So uh, it makes it grayscale. And then maybe the next thing it's going to do, it's going to detect, okay, um, the, shape, the shape of your face. Is there, is there, some, is, is there a way I can tell uh, can I get uh, the boundaries of whatever is in this photo? Like now the boundaries. And then the next one would be like, after, after finding the boundaries, um, can I extract some unique features? So all those are, 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 are uh, steps within which the algorithm uses to make its decision. So on the far left, these yellow circles could be the features, yeah? If we go back to the example for, uh, if we go back to the example for uh, sentiment analysis, where we go in, we go into the text, and we try looking for positive words. So let me say this one uh, is awesome. This one is, uh, I feel sick. This one is, uh, um, it's just flat. There is no positive. There is no negative. So it extract the next one. It it looks for something else. The next one it looks for something else. Uh, so this the the ones in green are what in deep learning is called hidden layers. So if we take an example of an image, the one that I said that the first thing it does is to remove uh, color. Uh, you, you took a photo using your phone and uh, you expose it to a, a deep learning model, the, the algorithm will first try to remove color. So you, you might say that this first hidden layer, for instance, sorry, this first hidden layer, for instance, is to, to remove color. The next one is to try and check uh, if, if there is any shape. The next one now, whatever it is, there are quite a lot of uh, layers um, depending on the kind of network you're building. Once it does all those things, um, at the end of it all, the red, the red becomes the output, um, the, red, the red cycle. So the output could be, if it is, if it is a, a binary, for instance, you use deep learning to classify, it's a, as, a, as a binary classifier, it could be one of two things. Either it could be happy or sad, or it could be cat or dog, or it could be multi-class. So multi-class is where you use, uh, you build a neural net that would not generate one output, but it will generate several outputs. There are several cases where you do that. So for instance, if you want to, to categorize um, um, incidents of a help, support help desk, support help desk, uh, the incident could be either database related, it could be, it could be hardware, it could be software. So um, the incident as it passes through, it can be put into one out of many several uh, uh, output. So basically, uh, that is how, um, uh, by and large, uh, a neural net does its decision making. Uh, and we'll go through each and every um, component. And some of the components are, there is something called the neuron. There is a, an activation function. We'll, also, we'll actually also look at uh, how neural networks work, how they learn. And then we'll also cover gradient descent. Uh, stochastic gradient descent, and then we we also look at back propagation. So these are these are very very um, common terms, a bit intense and confusing, but with time it it gets better. Yeah. Okay. Now neural neuron neuron. I don't know if we'll have enough time, but I'll try as much as possible um, to go through the contents um, that we have. So if you look at if you if you hear um, 
about a neuron. Um, let's assume you hold your hand and you pinch it. So when you pinch your hand, just by uh, slightly, it will it will trigger. Okay, if it's slightly, it might not mean anything. Yeah, it's it might mean that to you you might just continue pinching it, or someone else is pinching you. So if they pinch you lightly, you'll just ignore. Uh, maybe it's a game or something, or if you're if you have a baby somewhere there and you just do a small pinch. If it's not, if you don't apply a lot of pressure, they'll probably think you're playing and uh, maybe laugh at you or laugh with you. But if you exact, if you exert more pressure on it, um, there's a, there's a reaction they'll give you. They won't know whether to cry or, or, or smile anymore. They'll stop smiling. But if you continue exerting a lot of pressure and they start feeling pain, the moment they start feeling pain, they will remove their hand and maybe start crying. Same to you. Uh, you'll probably remove your hand and hit this guy who is trying to pinch you. So there is an analogy. How does that information translate? Um, is, how, how is it transmitted from your hand to the point where you decide to remove or pull out your hand and, uh, and take a decision? Uh, I have to receive a phone call. Just, just give me a minute. I'll get back to you in two minutes. Sorry, guys. Um, now, I was saying, how does that information get transmitted from your hand all the way to the point where you make a decision to pull it or... Uh, or to laugh, or to withdraw, or even to hit the person who's pinching you. So there is a way these things are com communicating through neurons. So your hand, the body of a human being has things called neurons. Uh, it's a way of transmitting information from one point to another, eventually to the brain. Um, and then the brain makes a decision on whether to, uh, to pull through or, or not. Okay, sorry again. Um, so each of these, uh, the way it's transmitted is, this is what has been adopted on, or as a neural network on communicating from one point to another. And when you exert that pressure, there's a reason why when it reaches a certain threshold, a certain decision needs to be made. And uh, that decision that needs to be made is either withdraw my hand or slap this guy or uh, cry, depending on, who is being pinched. Yeah? So if we look at that, I will try and relate it to the way the neuron makes its decision. But the, the first slide here, we have several inputs. Um, if we pick uh, um, an input is like a value. Think of, think of an Excel sheet that has columns and uh, that column, um, let me say, if you had, uh, if you wanted to, to predict the price of a house, yeah? Let's forget about the neuron for now. Uh, sorry, about the, um, the neuron for now. I want to explain the, if you wanted to predict the price of a house, for instance, so the price of a house is determined by the size of the house, maybe the number of bedrooms, um, the location it is in. Um, uh, uh, what else? The environment, uh, what amenities are around it, uh, and so many other features. So those are what we, can, we could call as, as features. So maybe the price could be, uh, if, if we were to put a formula uh, that uh, to determine the entire price of the house, then if we would say that if it is near a supermarket, then let's, let's, let's give it more weight. If it is not um, near a supermarket, the weight is reduced. And then another thing would be if it is big, it's not a big compound, let's give it more weight. If it is near a school, Let's give it more weight. Uh, if it doesn't have, so all these things are determinant to 
the price. So if we look at this side, the y value, this is the output value, that is the price. And then these are the features or what I've just mentioned, um, near supermarket X1, uh, near a school X2, um, something else, all those other things that we can think of. Now, what, what how do how are all these features combined to get this price that is what is hidden yeah so there is there is sort of like some hidden formula that decides um the the price of that house yeah and within that neuron is where the hidden information is so we would want to unpack it that is what i was explaining here the input value it's called uh, also called an independent variable so when you push it to a neuron, using that hidden formula, the, the, the network will now determine um, the price is, say, a 7 million, 12 million. But individually, you wouldn't know by how much does the location determine the price of the house or by how much does the number of bedrooms determine the price of the house. So all these independent features are used to determine the price of that house. Yeah. So the output, the output value could be continuous, which we have said it is a price. But if it's a problem where it is either cat or dog, we, are, we, we train our network to, 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 to determine whether it's a cat or a dog, then the output would be binary. It's either yes or no, or cat or a dog. So that is, that is binary. C categorical is when it is a multi-class. For instance, like I had given an example where we have uh, incidents of uh, support where one incident could be hardware related software related um, or a database related so it could be one of many it could be three four five like in this case here in this case we have several output values so these are categorical yeah so the neuron you take all this you put a formula uh, execution and then you get several output values Single output value, that is a single observation. Now, an observation is when you have, I had given an example of an Excel sheet with all those features for the house. And then the output now is the price for the house. So when, when you drill down, the hidden formula, I had mentioned about the weight. So let's look at um, a, a neuron. There is a hidden formula here that takes certain, um, take certain uh, parameters. The first parameter is what is in X1. If it is, near, uh, it, if it is near a supermarket, for instance, it could be uh, the distance uh, with uh, a supermarket. It could be two kilometers. This one is 20 kilometers from the supermarket. This one would be uh, 0 0.5 kilometers. So it is a combination of these together with a certain weight. When you multiply this and this, this and this, this and this, like now XM and WM. W stands for the weight and X stands for the independent variable. All these are combined within the neuron and then an output is derived, all right? Now, the first step the, the, the neuron does, the first thing the neuron does is it, it sums up the combination. So if it is a simple um, mathematical formula, it's X1 uh, times W1, X2 times W2, xm times wm and then it sums them up and gets a value yeah as the first step the second step whatever it gets it's it it uh, it exposes this to uh, a function yeah you'll get to know the the name of that function in a bit so it exposes that it exposes that summation to a certain function before determining the output all this is happening within the neuron okay so the third, the, third step, the third step is to, to derive the output value. So it has exposed the, um, the function, the summation to a function, and it is now deriving the output value, All right? Okay, the activation function. Now, if we go back here, this function is what is called the activation function, and we have several activation functions. We have several activation functions. Um, Without worrying so much on what each of them uh, do, um, think of these functions as the one that 
combines all those features together with the weights to derive a certain de determinant. So if it is a certain threshold, this one looks like uh, a sigmoid function, um, but you know this one, uh, it looks like the, the, the logistic uh, sigmoid function where you can only have one of two, yeah? So depending on uh, your problem statement or uh, depending on your depending on your classification problem, there are certain uh, activation functions that you use. Yeah. So for a binary output, this one gives you either zero or one, similar to a sigmoid function. Uh, sigmoid function. Now there is a rectifier. So we have three, we've looked at uh, three so far. There is a rectifier, hyperbo hyperbolic tangent, tangent, that is also an activation function. This is mathematical. So um, for today, just know that at some point we will expose and use one of this activation function. And when the, the, the main reason of using them is it is going to help us determine how well do we combine these inputs to come up with an output that is going to be so close to the real value. So if we know our house is 7 million and we want to predict another house within the same area, can we come close to a, a certain value? Yeah, okay. Now, this is how it all fits in. So we have an input value, we have a weight, we have an activation function. We have an activation function, and then we have an output value. Okay, so a uh, dependent variable can be binary and a sigmoid function. It could be a threshold activation or a sigmoid function. If I'm moving so fast, please uh, just feel free to interrupt me. Yeah. Okay, now the next slide, the activation function picks uh, the values depending on if you add a if you, had, uh, if you add a hidden layer, you can decide to first do a rectif um, rectifier, use, use a rectif uh, rectifier function, um, this one. Use a rectifier function within the hidden layer before using a sigmoid function at the output layer, depending on your decision. So these are terms that um, are very common when you're, look, when you're doing, uh, when you're building a neural network and you'll actually see it in code. So an understanding of where to use which one would be crucial, but uh, along the class, you will get to know um, which one to use where, right? How do they work? I had mentioned, uh, I, had, uh, I had given a, a hint uh, previously uh, by giving an example of a house. So this one is the area, for instance, in feet, the number of bedrooms, uh, distance to a city or distance to supermarket, or even the age of the house, for instance. And these are the different weights. So if the age of the house, there are some houses that when they are old, old, old enough, they, they start getting more expensive. And there are houses that when uh, they are young, they are expensive. So depending on uh, the age, W4 could, be, could have more weight than the others. So assuming each of these weights are there as it is right now, they are, they are exposed to an activation function to determine the, the price of the house, okay? All right, so each of these, the, the network would then after, during, during, um, during training, uh, when you're building the network, your neural network, it tries to get the optimal combination uh, of weights with the independent variables to determine which combination generates the best output in terms of uh, which one has uh, uh, the least error. So basically the error is the predicted value, whatever you're going to predict, how far is it from the actual value? So the neural network tries to combine several weights and combine them through an activation function and makes a decision on uh, the prediction, makes a decision on the, uh, the variable, what you're, what you're trying to predict, yeah? 
So it could be uh, several combinations. This is just to illustrate how um, uh, a hidden layer tries to combine or uh, during training, what goes on during the training. So several ways are, are attempted. And as you will learn later in the class, um, something called forward propagation and, and backward propagation and what all those mean in terms of um, the objective is to reduce to reduce um, the error to the bare minimum. The error, like I said, it's uh, the difference between the real value and um, the predicted value. Yeah. So that is still the process of, of, of determining weights. Yeah. And finally, a price is um, a price is determined after a combination of different weights um, applied to each of the independent variables. Okay. We've gone through this. We've gone through this. Um, so if you look at uh, the arrows, the first one, I want to I want to explain the process of something I've just mentioned a few minutes ago. Forward forward neural network for a single layer. So it takes all the parameters, independent variables, x1, x2, all the way to xm, and applies certain weights to them. Expose it to an x uh, to a an activation function, and then makes a prediction. Now this prediction is compared to the actual value through something called a cost function, yeah? So this cost function could be, um, uh, this is a formula. So it's the predictive value less the actual value square divided by two. And we have different uh, cost function. So basically, once it takes this cost function, it can make a decision of, look at this graph here. The graph has uh, the predicted value in Y and then the actual value is, is, is green. The actual value is green, the predicted value is blue. Yeah, so the difference between this tall graph and tall bar graph and this one, that is a cost function, yeah? Okay, now, it, it's, it's no, using the cost function, it goes back and readjust the weights, yeah? Um, and the idea behind, it, behind readjusting the weights is to make sure that the difference between the Y and the Y predicted value and the Y, the actual value is minimal. So in this case, we are reducing the cost function, yeah? So that difference, the network go, goes and readjusts the weights, for a second rerun. Now, if we look at, uh, it continues until now you can see, it's normally very, very difficult to get a cost function of zero, but uh, the minimum uh, it is the better. Now, if we look at, uh, if we look at, <coughs> excuse me, if we look at uh, um, an Excel, we are all familiar with an Excel, and the example here is, uh, an exam. So you want to predict uh, uh, by how much, what percentage guys sleeping, you're looking at the number of hours someone is studying and uh, someone else is, uh, the person is sleeping uh, and the percentage they get, <coughs> or what, what are they most likely to get as a, an exam, yeah? So this guy, row number one, this guy studied 12 hours, sleep six, and they get 78%. So if we had several rows, we could build a network that could actually predict, uh, make a prediction of the, squeeze, of the quiz result. And the real value here in this case is 93%. So the predicted value here is 78%. The difference between 93 and 78 is still large. So you want to, you want to optimize by reducing this difference, yeah? So you can build a network to help you reduce this difference. <clears throat> so if you take those, the values for, for instance, x1 to be 12, uh, x, x2 to be six, and xm to be uh, 78, uh, sorry, x1 to be 12 and x2 to be six, and together with any other features, you make a prediction, goes to the cost function, um, 
the cost function it's readjusted yeah i want you to just look at uh, the the graph weight one weight two and weight m uh, all of them are readjusted and the same is repeated again so the net, the network goes um, goes forward at readjusting the weights they keep um they keep uh, readjusting the weights as it 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 goes through the the features within the record yeah within the observation okay and that's the same thing that is on this other slide yeah so if we look at now the entire process i don't know did i lose everyone No, we are still here. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. All yeah, right. yeah, we are good. All right. Keep going. All right. Okay. Uh, so if you look at uh, if you look at the iteration process, so it's 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 uh, the objective here is to reduce to the bare minimum the difference between the actual value and the predicted value, and the when you look at this, the cost function at this point is lower than how we had begun. So let me just scroll back, check that out. So the first one, when you start, the first iteration, the cost function is huge. So it means um, the error is huge. So it, it goes back, readjust the weights and execute the activation function. The cost function increases, uh, but this time around, it's because the predicted value is greater than the actual value. And then uh, it goes back, readjusts the weights, and makes a prediction. Um, it's normally very difficult to get to this point where the cost function is absolute zero. Yeah. Um, you hardly get to this point where the cost function is absolute zero. Um, now, if we are looking at a complete data set, <clears throat> Sorry, a question. Yes. Let me just ask on behalf of people here. So okay. you talked about an iterative process, right? Yes. So it keeps the it keeps on iterating to a point where it gets uh, the cost to reduce the cost function to its bare minimum, right? Yes. yes. So when does it stop? When is minimum minimum? Because we don't have a zero cost function. Yes. Now. Um... I think if it is, we are going to cover that when you're looking at gradient descent, uh, but for the way it is, uh, for as long as that iteration goes, uh, there are certain ways of detect detecting um, through visual um, how the network does its decision and you will uh, be able to determine if you're uh, satisfactory in terms of uh, the output you're getting. So you're, you're right when you say you can't, you can't get actually a, a zero cost function. But this was just illustration of uh, how the cost function, the objective is to reduce the cost function to the bare minimum. Uh, when I'll be handling the gradient descent in the uh, coming slides, you'll actually get to see. Lona, did I answer your question or it's uh, confusing? Yes, 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 oh. yes, yes, yes. Oh. Oh, Thank okay. you. All right. Okay, now when you're looking at a data set and uh, when, when it's, uh, let's take for instance, single layer feed forward looks at one observation. Yeah, single layer feed forward looks at one observation. So, so it iterates through a single observation <clears throat> to the point where the cost function is to the bare minimum. And when you look at now, the first thing here, um, the, the, it picks, look at the, look at the screen, um, the very, very fast network here and the very, very fast observation here. So we have eight observations. I want you, when I, when I push the slide, just follow through, you get to see um, how the training of the network does. So the first one, what I showed you in previous slides, it is working on the single, the single observation yeah now this time around it's going to the second observation and iterating the same 
is still iterating. The third observation. Now, uh, if you look at the third observation, and then it goes to the fourth observation, and then all the observations are, 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 uh, are uh, when you're running through like now multiple observation, it makes, it makes several predictions on each, on each uh, observation, yeah? And weights are adjusted. So that entire process, it's repeated with the network that you build, with the same same cost function that we had, we had seen earlier. So the objective is to reduce the cost function. So if you look at all these observations, so for the first observation, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, eight observations, yeah? So you'll see that the predicted value, which is blue, and the actual value, which is green, um, it reached a point, the combination of all this, we adjust the weight, and the entire process is repeated again with the objective of reducing the cost function. All this is done by the neural network that you will build. So this one, um, this one is an explanation based on a, a data set, but the analogy is similar as you will uh, come to learn uh, in uh, future slides uh, when we are using for image uh, processing. Gradient descent. So we mentioned about uh, the cost function. <clears throat> it's a mathematical formula and basically it's, uh, it's the way to reduce the, 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 the difference between the actual value and uh, the predicted value. So if the predicted value is 7 million, uh, your model could predict 3 million, but that difference is so huge, rendering your model useless. Uh, you could, your model could predict uh, 10 million, that difference is still big, between 7 and 10. So you go back and forth until the point where it reaches maybe 6.5, 6 6.9, 6, or even 10.5, uh, sorry, 7.5 or 8, yeah? <clears throat> so um, that graph is an illustration of uh, ideally um, the reduction process of uh, the error, the error. Um, from this point now, it, it gets a bit, it gets a bit uh, confusing. It's not as direct as when you are using um, uh, the Excel sheet or the tab or the records, yeah. But follow me. I'll come back to this slide in a short while. So if you if you follow me, this one looks familiar. So it's a hidden layer. Uh, once you once you once you once you once once it's 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 trained. Um, when 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 we come to this slide. I'm thinking of the best way to explain um, how your um, okay. Let me say um, you have. Uh, uh, huh, how do I explain this? Uh, can I make a suggestion? Yes. Yes, uh, Mark. So uh, you, you can see the second diagram, mm -hmm. you have that slope. So uh, maybe when you, you can explain how, while calculating the cost function, mm -hmm. you can calculate the slope of, uh, how, what's, what's that red ball called? You can calculate the derivative of the cost function mm -hmm. and how that slope tells you how, how, how the slope uh, shows you how steep the curve is so it can point you in the right direction. So yeah. the steeper the slope, the higher the cost function. Okay, okay. I wanted, I want. I was looking for an example. Thanks, Mark. Uh, I wanted to use an example of, because uh, this one is definite, basically rate of change. The rate of change of, uh, when you mention derivative, it's, it's the rate of change of, uh, 
an observation. Uh, I want to give an example of, yeah, you see the blue line? The blue line, as Mark says, the blue line and uh, the red ball. When it is the gradient, if you look at the gradient, it's um, like you're, you're drawing a line, a triangle joining these two, these two ends of the blue line. So when you calculate the rate of change of this slope, you'll get a certain um, uh, derivative. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to explain it in layman terms uh, for the beginners. Let me put this, without using the derivatives and the function, let's, let's look at someone who is, who is running. <clears throat> for example, Usain Bolt, yeah? Usain Bolt is known to be the fastest person in uh, the world for some time. Um, I am not so sure if he's still the fastest person. Uh, but when he starts sprinting 100 meters, uh, what happens? Does it just shoot to... Uh, for instance, if he was going uh, eight miles per second or eight miles, I don't know how fast he moves. Does he move instantaneously that fast or he accelerates with time, uh, reaches a point where he shoots and then decelerates um, towards the end? So when you, look at, when you look at that speed, when you look at that speed of Usain Bolt, the rate of change of his speed, the rate at which he takes off at the beginning, is not the same as when he's speeding in between. So for example, if, if Hussein Bolt was uh, starting a race from this point, yeah, from here, the graph would be, uh, if this one is the distance covered, y is the distance covered, and this one is, sorry, x, okay, this one here, this is y predicted value, and this is the cost function. So uh, we will scrap of this, scrap of this, for the sake of this explanation. Um, when he starts, the distance he's covering will be longer. Yeah, uh, the distance, the, the time, sorry, the time he covers, this is the distance. The time he covers as compared to the distance is, uh, is longer as compared to when once he has accelerated, he covers a longer period of time, but within a very short, a very short time. And when he goes, when he, when it's towards almost towards the end, the same thing happens. Now he started, he starts decelerating. He starts decelerating. So he covers um, a short period with a long time. So when we come back to this, the cost function here, the predicted value. The red is the predicted value coming down. Um, the cost function reduces. The cost function is basically the difference between the y value, the actual value, and the predicted value. So the objective is to reduce it. But there are times when you shoot, like we had observed. Um, there are times when you shoot. Uh, I think there was an illustration here, like in this case here. There are times when your predicted value shoots, meaning your cost function goes up. So this cost function goes up and your predicted value and your actual value, uh, the difference goes up. So when you come back here, there are times when, uh, let me say, imagine a ball in a, a red ball playing around in a, in a big, inside a big, inside a big bucket. So if the cost function is reducing, you're reducing the cost function. You come to the bare minimum, but there are instances when it goes up all the way and then comes back down again. It might pass again, and then it comes until it settles. Um, it settles at the bare minimum. So during your predictions, um, the, the objective or of, of deriving um, how, how this, this cost function is reducing, it's what is called gradient descent. So you will be reducing the cost function over time. If that ball is making you confused, just think of this. Let's look at these eight observations. The cost function here is not as big. Uh, this one is not as big. This one is slightly big. 
And uh, to make it simple, the cost function is just the difference between the actual and the predicted value. This one is big. And then on the eighth one, this one is almost telling us that there is zero cost function. But if you look at the blue and the green, um, they are not the same level. So gradient descent is when we, are, we keep reducing. It's like a ball that keeps oscillating. It oscillates until it settles at the bare minimum. So if the bare minimum is here, that would be the ideal position. But as you will see in uh, as you will see in future slides, there are instances where if the bucket is not as uh, smooth or symmetric, it could it could settle on a local something I would call a local minimum, and a local minima is not normally um, the 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 optimal. Uh, I will explain that when when visually, yeah. So that slide, together with this slide, just explains the way um, the gradient descent or uh, the gradient or the cost functions, cost function changes over time as the as the, the network is doing its um, its its work. Okay. Now this, like I said, it's the optimal cost function. Like now. It is not high. Remember, this is the cost function. This is the predicted value. It is not high, and it has oscillated and it has settled all the way, the middle. Okay. Now, this is um, the next thing I want to explain. Where it is not as straightforward as this one. So there are instances when. Um, the oscillation and the and the changes of the cost function it could settle um you could get the especially if uh, you're dealing with uh, what i would call uh, several several features exposed on uh, let me say you have several uh, you see, for instance, this one, let me just go back. This one is a very straightforward problem. We are, we are looking at a 2D space, this one. 2D space is just basically, you can, you can look at uh, um, uh, studies, sleep, and, and quiz. Uh, what if we had a 3D space where within, within study, there are, there are su subsets? There are subsets and even several variation of studies, or several so several variation of sleep. So we have such instances. So you might your 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 network might or your model might determine um, a value that yes it is it is it is lower, but it's not the optimal one. So that that that's. Uh, that occurrence is normally known as the curse of curse of dimensionality. So, you might settle into um, a certain minima, believing that that is the best cost function that you can get. But ideally, what it did, you see, uh, the graph on the three D space on your right, it it's, it still has some slopes. Basically, there is a way that uh, that cost function can be reduced further. So when it settles on on one. There is a likelihood that it can. It is a local, what is called a local minimum. Now, to solve that curse of dimensionality, there is something called stochastic gradient descent. Yeah, if you get lost, especially for the guys who are beginners, um, just pick pick some pick some words here and before now and the next class, you could just do research and we engage further. But if you're following and you have questions, please go ahead and ask. Um, the next slide, yeah. So if we try and, and treat this, um, this slide here is just a, basically a presentation of uh, this 3D. 
this one. It won't really, from, from here it's a bit confusing, but when you come to this, you can actually correlate it with the previous slide where the, the ball was oscillating. So in this case, assuming the same same cost function, you, you, your network goes through your data, it goes through your data and keeps oscillating. It might come to a bump and it might not go to the ideal local minimum, which is this one. It will settle here. Uh, sorry, the optimal minimum here. It will settle here. So when it settles here, you might think that that is the best you can actually achieve. But because your data is, uh, uh, is of several dimensions, is someone trying to say something? Okay. So that is exactly, you know, my multidimensional space, that is how it operates. So we miss, okay, there's someone, there's someone. Uh, okay. All right. Now, um, what you're looking at is how the decision for gradient descent is made. There is a way you can pick a record single by single, or you can pick it batch by batch. So what you're seeing is instead of going observation by observation, you can define a batch that the network picks and uh, readjusts the weight as it makes its decisions. Yeah. So the yellow circle, it's like it picks the entire batch. So this batch, these are things that you will see in code um, as, as the network makes its decisions. Uh, all right. So if you look at these three slides, I'll, I'll put them together. Um, I had explained. Um, stochastic gradient descent adjust the weights row by row instead of adding all rows to the network and then adjust the weights, okay? So these are things that um, drive the decision with the, the single objective of arriving to this. So there's a way that when you, when you, um, when you look at your data set by either, um, the network operating on, 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 on it row by row or batch by batch, then that would make you end up either in a, a situation like this one. But when you look at it row by row, you get to avoid, when you get to avoid uh, such situations, okay? So at each every, the difference between this um, is you collect the entire set, you collect the entire set, the entire set of uh, batch, you define a batch, and then the, the network readjusts the weights. And then for stochastic, it's row by row, and each, of, each, each, each time, row by row, the weights are adjusted. That is the difference. And uh, stochastic gradient descent um, addresses the cast of dimensionality. And the cast of dimensionality would um, most likely make us believe we've reached the best and uh, ideally the best is uh, just the local minima. So something like this, something like this, yeah, okay. <clears throat> All right, now back propagation. I think I'm almost done. Let me just check, um, let me just check, uh, yeah, I'm almost done. Then we go to the questions. Yeah. So you won't go through the the you won't go through the the notebook. So the first notebook will be the same one. Okay. So forward propagation. So if you have several hidden layers, uh, forward pro propagation is where you you are adjusting the weights as the network um, traverses through the, the, the layers. 
the layers that you have um, until the decision is made on the output layer. Bank propagation is depending on the output, uh, the output that uh, your network comes up with and uh, getting the cost function and readjusting the weights. It goes back, the weights are readjusted and uh, the, the pattern is uh, repeated one more time. So um, when, when, when you're training your neural network um, with stochastic gradient descent, there are like seven steps um, as explained in previous slides. So initially the weights, uh, we, we hardly know the weights. So there is a provision of uh, initializing those weights. Yeah. And then each, 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 each feature, corresponds to an input node. So it's like a feature, it's an input node. This is what it means. Uh, I think it's even here. Um, yeah. So this x1, x2, x3, that becomes the input nodes. So in input, input the first observation, and the first observation is equivalent to the record in your Excel sheet, for instance, in your data set in the input layer. And then it, it is uh, forward propagated from left to right. The neurons are activated in a way that the impact of each neuron's activation is limited by the weights. So the propagation, the activation until um, the predicted, until you, you achieve the predicted results. That is step three. Number four, the predicted result is compared to the actual result and an error is measured. Based on that error, based on that error, it is back propagated and the weights are adjusted. The weights are readjusted according to how much they are, um, they contribute to the error. Each of these is, is repeated for each of the, each of the observation until, um, until an optimal or um, let me put it this way um, until the cost cost function is to the bare minimum and we have uh, once the just a minute Now, an iteration of uh, an iteration of uh, of the data set of of the observations until uh, let me say if you're doing uh, row by row uh, as per the stochastic GD, by the time you get to the last row, it is repeated. Now that forms an an an, an epoch. So these are some. This is another term you'll come across um, when you're training your, your model through an, uh, an ANN, artificial neural network, okay? I will explain, uh, I think today we won't achieve time to go through CNN, but when I'll be explaining CNN, um, the slides are so many, when I'll be explaining CNN, is coming next. Um, I think I'll explain CNN when we are doing the code, when we'll be doing the code. So this is just, this was just an intro to, to, to deep learning and uh, it's quite a mouthful, especially for uh, those guys who are just beginning. Um, some of these concepts are, uh, you get better with time um, and it gets, it gets clearer with time. I don't know if there is anyone with a question. I think we are going to, uh, end at that point and discuss on um, how we are going to move forward with specific actionables between today and the next time we are having this class. So basically between today and Friday next week, uh, what, what should be done and what will be happening? Any question? Lana, at some point you 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 disappeared. 
No, we, we are listening. Oh, okay. Hi, hi. So, sorry, sorry. I got engaged <laughs> doing something. I'm sorry, but okay. I'm still here. Okay. I think it's difficult since we have muted our mics. You can't hear us making casual feedback. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's it's normally very tricky, um, especially when 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 running a session through Zoom. It's normally a bit uh, tricky to know if people are following, but it's it's good that you guys are followed through to the end. So, uh, are, are there any questions or, uh, Freddie? Freddie, was this? Uh, was this too intense? Question. Yes, Lord. Question. Um, we have, like, um, I can see you didn't finish the slides. Mm. So what's the plan? All right. Uh, I think the plan moving forward, this was just an intro to the planning. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the plan is we are going to, we are going to move to uh, Jupyter Notebook. But as we do mm -hmm. the Jupyter Notebook, I'll mm -hmm. be explaining any other concept that uh, is related to CNN mm -hmm. because the work we are going to do is not going to be based on ANN. It is going to be based on CNN. Okay. Now, yeah. um, now for the people here um, who are pretty new to this, uh -huh. is there a way you can kind of maybe, um, I don't know, so that they can kind of just go back and read on whatever slides that are left mm -hmm. so that when you come to that part mm -hmm. they can easily just um understand or even kind uh, ask any question in relation to what they have read i don't know yeah how yeah. can you share this information with them the rest of the things that you've not covered okay. i guess that's um, my question okay so um what I'm going to do, we're going to, I'm going to create a, a WhatsApp group uh, for uh, image processing based on our project that we're going to do. And then uh, the, the content and the information I'm going to share, I'm going to share links for, uh, to help you digest what, what we've covered and uh, together with the, the content that we've covered. And um, for, but it's going to be restricted within the, the window because this is very huge it's good to, to provide guidance. So what's, what the content I'm going to share is to help us to, to be ready for the, next, uh, for the next session. And the next session is going to be, how are you going to prepare the images? How are you going to, how are you going to um, do some, how are you going to start coding? So all this is going to be shared in the WhatsApp group the moment I create it and all the resources will be posted on that WhatsApp group. And we will definitely continue engaging that WhatsApp group. So I'm going to share the content. Uh, can I make a suggestion that might be unpopular with the rest? <laughs> yes. For the beginners, I think it's Sharon and Freddie, can they just go tell, can they tell us what they think they have learned today, as in go through the slides and just give us a top level, uh, sh short, uh, short summary of what we've done. So just to see if they have understood what the concept. I, I like that. I like that. It would be good to hear. Yeah. <laughs> Fred? I'm saying, I'm saying I can, Freddie and uh, I think it's Sharon. Can they go through the slides and uh, make a quick summary so that we can see if they have understood the concepts? Uh, so, so for me, for me, I'm just copying up with the so I'm just copying with the classes. So I request for the previous work which you did last time when I was not there. You mean the the the, the initial um, slides? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Was it yesterday? Oh no! Yesterday we covered something different. Each day we cover a different project, 
Um, yeah. So on Wednesday, it was NLP. Um, that has a, a group on its own. Um, yesterday was uh, demand forecasting. Uh, yeah. That's a, a group on its own. Now today, today mm -hmm. this is what this was the first class, and it is actually theoretical. Um, so you haven't, if if that is what you mean, then it means you haven't missed anything. But uh, I understand uh, there are some information you might need before getting to this point. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Um. Mm -hmm. Um, how do you go about this? Uh, so for uh, for uh, Freddie and uh, Sharon. Okay, let's hear from Sharon as well. So uh, how much, Freddie? How much of today's work um, makes sense to you? Yeah, in the part of training the model. Uh, yeah, so there yeah, because I've dealt uh, with Adreno and Raspberry Pi uh -huh. on projects which entail uh, a machine which sorts sorts some fruits. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, so mm -hmm. there in training the model model mm -hmm. I've understood. Okay. And the part yeah. that is uh, is uh, is uh, gray. Which part is gray? Um, if you could just give me a uh, give us like a, a brief of which which part is gray, so that we could actually uh, figure out the best way to to bring you at the same level. The the part where you are demonstrating about Usain Bolt. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Oh, okay. The gradient descent. Yeah. Oh, okay. From this point, um, let me go back there. Uh, yeah, from this part. Yeah. Okay. So the concept here is what was. Uh, uh, from this point is what was uh, not clear. Is there any other? Okay, now there's gradient descent, and then um, which other which other area is not was not so clear? The ex exp expressions. How oh, do they go? Um, which ones? The which expressions? They have. Go back. Uh, yeah, C. The C. Yeah. No. Here. Yeah. Which side? Um, so this the the part which is encircled. Uh, okay. Which slide? This slide that I have, or the one I've just passed? Yeah. This you have. Oh, okay. So the the circle in. Yeah, there, three, there. This one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, you 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 had me mention about uh, activation function, so yeah. that is the part. So what yeah. I can do, um, I've taken the gradient descent, I've taken the activation function, and uh, mm -hmm. what else? What else? Um, Freddie. Uh, I'm just going through. Is another diagram. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is mm -hmm. where we start. This is where we started from. So let me this just go through. Let me just go through. We can okay, pick up on your beer. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. 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 Uh, stochastic. Um, okay. Now uh, this is my. It's a, a problem. So uh, this is what is called the cast of dimensionality. Is there anything else? Um, these are those are three. So I've taken note. Um, I've taken note of those three. Uh, is there anything else? No. Let me let me just scroll, scroll through again uh, so that you check. You said the training part you understand. This part you understand. Huh? The training of the model. The training model. of the model. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to propose are uh, this part. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to propose, uh, Freddie. Uh, Sharon is saying she's in a noisy place. Sharon, please go ahead and just type. Uh, for the rest of the guys, please, uh, you can you could read uh, Sharon's um, type. Uh, for Freddie, Freddie, what I'm going to propose, uh, yeah. uh, I would want to 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 run another session with you and uh, Sharon, and yeah. start the journey from the basic. There are some videos that I've shared on my on 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 YouTube. Yeah that uh, starts from the very, very basic. So I can run, the, I can run with you guys uh, to explain some basic foundations before the next class. Yes. And uh, we could have uh, maybe at least uh, two sessions before the next class. Mm -hmm. uh, on, on a time, I, I would propose the first class, we see if it, we can do it either tomorrow Mm -hmm. Because I know during the week I'm going to be really swamped to have a session during the day, so we we'll do the first one tomorrow and then the second one on on Sunday, if you're available. So I will take yeah. you through the very very basics of uh, yeah. foundations. There are some guys also in yesterday's and the previous days class who made that request, so I could combine you guys, yes. and we go through the basic and bring you to a point where you can understand uh, some of these concepts. Uh, before the next class. Okay. Uh, Mark, I don't know if that would work for them. Uh, pardon? Yeah, I was just saying, uh, Freddy, Freddy, uh, Freddy has mentioned a couple of uh, uh, areas he didn't understand. So because of time, uh, I was proposing I have another session with him and, uh, and uh, Sharon. Uh -huh. tomorrow and Sunday I, in preparation for the next class so that by Friday next week all of us in uh -huh. the class will be at the same page. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For you, you okay? Yeah, I, I, I have these concepts okay. uh, down. Yeah. All right. You have questions? But mm -hmm. Can I make a request for uh, the because uh, I think you're going to be covering? Will you be covering uh, back propagation a little deeper in the in future slides? Uh, yes, moving moving forward, most of the classes are going to be on Jupyter notebook, but uh, I could do. I could do thirty minutes theory, and then the next one and a half hours we do notebook. Uh, we do notebook um, together as a class. What did you have in mind? No, uh, you, I, I, we, with the concepts on the neural networks, I have everything down. I, but I don't really have the intuition of how backpropagation works. I understand technically how it works, but I, you know how the gradient descent is the ball explanation, and yeah, I, I, I didn't have the same for back propagation okay okay yeah so if you so, if i could make that request all right okay no problem then i what i could do in um i could slot that in the first 30 minutes of uh, the next class i could uh, put together a few more things on uh, back propagation including um any concept that we'll be doing on jupyter notebook for that right I'm okay. All right. So, Freddie, Freddie, for you, what time is good tomorrow? 
Mm-hmm. Or I reach out to you after this. Yeah. So right. then I have an issue. Mm-hmm. There's a YouTube link you sent in the group. Mm-hmm. When I try to open it, it says it's private link. Video. Oh, that's video. for uh, that's for NLP. Yeah. Oh, are you in the NLP group? You, yeah. you, you are, huh? So what you do, you just inbox me your email address. Inbox me your email address. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What about for this class? I can see it's recorded. Can yes, yes, the... it's it's being recorded, and uh, um, I'm going to share the same. Once I create the group, I'm going to share yeah. the same. All the all the all the documentation I'm going to share on the doc, in, in the group. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So what you will do is just uh, share with me your email. Anyone in the meeting, please share with me your email if I don't have it. Uh, because uh, the recordings will only be accessed by the guys attending the classes. The recording and the and the, and the tutorial and the resources. So if I don't have your email address, just inbox me your email address on WhatsApp. Um, there is a, a message Sharon sent. Let me just read it. Uh, Lona, you, you're, for you, you're okay, yeah? That means. Hi, um, Ayub. Yes? I wouldn't mind seeing the slides, the contents of the other slides. I don't know what it is about. So okay. just going through through it by myself would be okay. All right. Okay. No Thanks. Problem. Thanks. Right. Okay. Uh, so for Sharon, the suggestion to have the slides you are going to take us through will be really helpful. Okay. Most of the concepts are very new. For today's lesson, I have learned the steps that one follows to train the model. And about the activation function, sigmoid threshold, I didn't get much from it. I will do my research and its application. All right, Sharon. Um, I think that's in order. Um, I think the objective would be by the time we get to the next class, uh, Friday, we'll be at the same level where we are uh, we're about to start writing code. And uh, Sharon, you might want to also join Freddy on tomorrow's session. So we will, let's, 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 let's engage and, and identify which is the best time. I think in the morning hours, there is a meetup that I'm attending. So the most probable time would be between 2.30 and uh, 3.30. We could have a one hour session or a one and a half hour session where we can walk through together and see how fast we can come to the level that is uh, appropriate. For Mark, um, I will, I will uh, spend the first 30 minutes in the next session to go through backpropagation uh, together with uh, uh, the theoretical, the, the theory that is required for uh, next Saturday's class. Uh, and then to everyone else, including uh, Lona, I'm going to share all the resources. Im- immediately I create that group, I'll share all the resources. Okay. All right. So that's I think fine. It, that's fine. Huh? I think then if we are, uh, if we don't have any other um, question, um, until next time, you guys don't, this could sound, uh, a bit difficult, a bit confusing, and uh, but I I I I encourage you guys to to stick. When it comes to class, we appear. When it comes to work that needs to be done, we do it. When it comes to to research, we do the research, and we work together to the end. Um, until next time, thank you guys. Have a good evening. Um, we we'll talk later. For Fred and, 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 and Sharon, I know we'll talk tomorrow. Okay, have a good day. You have too. a good week. You too, man. Cheers.